thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at thrift stores, garage sales, and flea markets to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, stick around. And make sure to hit that like button and subscribe with the notification bells turned on. It will notify you of all of our newest content. All right, guys, today's video is going to be what sold for the week of February 5th through 11th. We had a pretty good week, so let's dive right in. The first thing we sold was a Lane Bryant pair of women's khaki pants. They were size um, 1820. They were new with tags. We had picked these up at a garage sale for a dollar and they sold for $20.18 on offer to buyer. Um, for some reason, these um, hung out in our store for kind of a long time and I'm not really sure why except maybe they were out of season, but they did eventually sell and we made um, a nice profit on them. We did also receive positive feedback. The next thing that sold was um, more window clings. And as you know from a previous video, we sell tons of window clings. They are a very popular item for us. Uh, these were Easter window clings and Easter's coming up. So I think we're probably gonna hopefully sell out of these. We still have several left, but we had gotten these um, at Big Lots shopping like after clearance retail arbitrage. We paid 33 cents for them and they sold for our full asking price of $12.99. Next up was a lot of four very sad um, Barbie dolls. They had, one of them had like a bad haircut and one of them, they were, one of them was missing a pair of pants and her shirt was torn. They were in bad shape. Um, but we had gotten those at like various thrift stores and maybe some of them came from the flea market. We had paid around $3 for the lot of them uh, and they sold on best offer for $15. Um, some of them were vintage from the 90s and then some of them were from like the mid 2000, mid um, early 2000s, like 2013, I think was the oldest one. And the next item that sold was a IPL laser hair removal device that we had purchased for personal use, but got uh, frustrated with it because it wasn't working fast enough and just eventually paid for professional laser hair removal and sold the, the one that we purchased. And that sold for $20 on best offer. And um, we just considered the cost zero because I don't remember what we paid for it. Probably not much more than $20, honestly. Um, next up was a board game that we got from the Goodwill bins. <laughs> and I... I'm still eating crow for saying that one time that we never got board games at the Goodwill bins because here's another one that we got. This one was um, missing tons of pieces. It was so far from being complete, but we did, invent so we sold it like for parts only. We inventoried all of the pieces and listed them out and still got, still made tons of money on it. It um, sold for our full asking price of $29.99 and we had paid only 92 cents in the Goodwill bins. So that was still great. Still glad we picked it up. Next up was a pair of BCBG Max Azaria women's jeans. They had um, kind of an embellishment on the pocket and we had gotten those also in the Goodwill bins. We paid 92 cents for those and they sold on offer to buyer for $25.18. Next up was something that we also got in the Goodwill bins. It was an OEM Mercury Electric sewing machine foot pedal. And that sold for $27.99, which was our full asking price. And we had paid 67 cents. Um, next up was a pair of new with tags, men's Levi's skinny jeans. They were made of Tencel, which is a really nice, um, a higher end fabric content like a higher end um fiber and um those sold for $39.38 on offer to buyer and those went somewhere they went somewhere in Europe through the global shipping program but we had paid up for those we paid like $12 at a garage sale and I'm not sure that I intended to pay that much for them but I don't really remember exactly the circumstances of this garage sale, except that I had made a pile and I intended like at the end of the sale to kind of go over the pile with the lady who was having the sale and see what her prices were. But then 
before I even finished shopping, she kind of came up to me and like gave me the price. And I don't remember why I felt so rushed and pressured in that moment, but for some reason, I just agreed to it and and it was a long time ago so I, I, don't, I don't really exactly recall why but I ended up buying some things that I didn't intend to buy and overpaying for some things that I w overpaid for and this was one of the things but anyway that's neither here nor there we still sold these and we still made money on them so it doesn't really matter but I would normally not pay $12 even for new with tags because they did sit in our store for a really long time. So um, anyway, next thing was a, um, it would belong to my husband. And if you watched one of our videos before, you know that we sell a lot of um, my husband's old baseball and sports card collections. And normally I wait until the end of the video to go over all of those, but this particular item is a complete set. So I included it in the main part of the video. So this is a 1995 Score Platinum Complete Team set of, of baseball cards. It sold for $10.99, which was our full asking price, and that belonged to us. Next was another item that belonged to us. It was my daughter's um, bathing suit, and it came with a, um, a swim shirt, a long sleeve swim shirt that matched it. The brand was Art Class, and that sold on best offer for $15.00 and uh, the cost was zero for us. Next was an item that was gifted to me from a family member. It was a vintage Dick and Jane book. It was from 1951 and that sold uh, for $14.99, which was our full asking price. It sold pretty quickly and we received positive feedback on that. And next up was an OEM Shure microphone or mixer. AC adapter power supply. That sold for $13 on best offer and we gotten that at the Goodwill outlet for 92 cents. And we always try to pick up like branded OEM type power adapters or cords and things like that at the Goodwill bins because those will sell. Those almost always sell and they sell pretty quickly. And they're just great money makers because they are usually lightweight and we pay very little for them because you pay by the pound at the Goodwill bins and we those are great money makers for us so we will pick those up every time we see them as long as they're branded and it's easy to identify them as well because they'll have model numbers on them so you can look them up and figure out exactly what they go to um next up was uh something that we got doing retail arbitrage it was a disney branded mickey mouse t-shirt it was a junior's size and it um, sold for $23 on best offer and we had paid $5.84 for it. Next up was a really cute craft kit. It was um, a box and it was called a leprechaun trap and you could decorate the box and then set it up to catch a leprechaun for St. Patrick's Day. And that sold for $19.99, which was our full asking price and we had gotten that in the Goodwill bins for um, 61 cents. But after it sold, pretty quickly after the buyer received it, they opened a case with their credit card company, um, like a payment dispute with their credit card company. And I, I'm not sure that I remember what exactly they stated the reason was. Maybe they didn't recognize the charge or for whatever reason, they opened a payment dispute. And then very quickly, it was closed in our favor. Maybe they realized that they did recognize the charge, what, whatever, but they did <laughs> they did close the case in our favor, thank goodness. But anyway, the I guess the leprechaun got a hold of that one. <laughs> but we were able to um to win, so that was good. Um next up was another item we found in the Goodwill bins. It was real small, it was like two and a half inches. It was the brand was Lemax and it was a um spooky town mini Halloween figure figurine for like, it, I think it was called the Haunted House Entrance. And it sold for $12.68 and we had paid 61 cents and it sold on offer to buyer. Next up was a, uh, a print. It was a signed and numbered print by the artist Carolyn Blish. And 
it sold for $89.99, which was our full asking price. And we had gotten that from another business that we own that we had liquidated some of the old stock that that business doesn't um, have any use for anymore. And we received really nice positive feedback from that buyer. She really liked it. Next up was a pair of Banana Republic cotton twill dress pants. Those sold for $15.78, and we had gotten those at a thrift store for $2.71. Um, unfortunately, those got returned because the buyer said they didn't fit. She was really nice about it, and we were, hap we're always happy to accept returns when an item doesn't fit. But um, I did mention this particular return in our are we in a reseller wormhole video because at the time that this return came through, I had had like back to back to back to back crazy things happening. And this was, this particular return didn't upset me that much, but this was just like one of like so many things that were happening in such a concentrated short period of time. So I will link that video above up here so you can check it out with all of the crazy things that happened in such a short period of time. Next up was another piece of artwork that we had acquired from the other business that we own. It was a original watercolor by the artist Joyce Gilbert. It sold for $44.98 and um, that sold on offer to buyer. We also received positive feedback on that. Next up was a pair of Hello Kitty Kiss um, slippers. And um, you may have seen these in our sourcing before the snowstorm video where we found these at the Goodwill bins. Uh, they, these sold within an hour for $24.99 and we had paid 94 cents at um, the Goodwill bins like I mentioned. And next up was a Sunbeam humidifier filter. It sold for $12.68 and we had gotten this at the Goodwill bins for 61 cents. And we found that like we pick up new and packaged filters all the time and they always sell. People buy them, you know, because they can get, because we'll sell them at below cost because we usually get them at way below cost. And so it's a great deal for them and a great deal for us. Next up is a Jolie's Boutique um, seven piece scrapbooking stickers. They were three dimensional stickers. We got these in the Goodwill bins and they were, they sold for $9.99, which was our full asking price. And we had paid 61 cents. They were, um, themed for first birthday. Next up was another OEM, um, uh, AC adapter cord for a Super Nintendo. We also got this at the same time we got the Kiss slippers. This sold immediately within 24 hours for $29.99 and we had paid 94 cents for it. Next up was a Brandon Thomas Genuine Suede Shacket. It um, sold for $33.68 and we had paid $5.86 at the thrift store. And this actually sat in our store for a really long time and then um, I had seen, I, I had never heard the word shacket before. And then I had seen, I, I don't know if I saw it on another YouTuber's channel or I saw it like in a store or something. And so I, then I realized, you know, what a shacket is and that that was kind of a new trend. And I went into that listing and put that in the title and then it sold very, very quickly. So that is a perfect example of how important keywords are um, because someone was looking for a shacket and they found ours. Next up is a Double D Ranch women's patriotic embroidered uh, t-shirt with a cross theme, a cross. Um, and this is a really expensive brand of t-shirt. These t-shirts in really good condition will sell for over a hundred dollars. So when I saw this in the thrift store, I was super excited to find it. But then when we got it home and started looking at it, I saw that it had a really tiny little hole in it. So I was like, oh, like I did not want to, we only paid $2.17 for it, but I didn't want to get rid of it because I knew somebody would still want it. Other than that tiny hole, it was in pretty good condition. So I had a thread that matched the color of the shirt perfectly and I was able to repair it. And the repair looked really good. I mean, I'm patting myself on the back, like <laughs> it looked really good. 
And so I listed it and I disclosed that it had the repair and I showed the picture of the repair and we, um, we discounted it significantly. Like I think I listed it for like $59.99 or something. And I ultimately took an offer of $40.48. And, um, you know, since we had only paid $2.17, I was thrilled with that considering that I had the damage. So that was still a great deal for us, but I would still love to find a perfect condition Double D Ranch shirt that I could sell for over $100. So be on the lookout for those Double D Ranch shirts. They are, they sell high. Next up was an American Girl doll that we got at the thrift store. We paid $9.73 for it and she sold pretty quickly for $46.99 which was our full asking price and we got positive feedback on it. Next up was a um, item that belonged to my husband. It was a vintage Whitman uh, one a year scent collection, like display folder. And then it had, it had 56 pennies in it. And we checked uh, none of the pennies that he had collected had um, any significant value to them. So we just sold the, the display folder with the pennies in it. And we sold it for $24.99, which was our full asking price. And um, then next up was a Talbot's women's merino wool cardigan. It had like a basket weave. Uh, we had that in our store for a really long time. Like it was the, our pictures weren't that good. It was from a long time ago when we didn't have our good lighting uh, set up or anything like that. That sold for $24 and we had paid $5 for it. We accepted a best offer. We did get positive feedback on that. Next up was a vintage 1960s Sarah Coventry two and a half inch white enamel brooch. It sold for $21 on best offer and we had gotten that at a garage sale for $1. Next up was a really great purchase. You may have seen this in our Cinderella's, I found Cinderella's shoes video, which was a sourcing video. I had found these wooden beginner snow skis. Uh, I found two pairs and I paid $7.41 per pair. So $14.82 for both of them together. I listed them separately, but this person bought both of them. And when I tried to comp them, um, I, I couldn't find any listed. I couldn't find any for sale anywhere. And the ones that I could find were sold out everywhere. So I couldn't tell if they had quit manufacturing them or if they were just out of stock, but they were definitely not available. And then the ones that I could find that were out of stock said that they were previously for sale for $69.99. So I decided that ours were used, but they were in excellent condition. I decided that I would list them for $69.99 free shipping and turn on best offer. Well, someone came and, and bought them at full price. So we sold both pairs to the same person for $139.98. So I was thrilled with that. So I'm definitely going to be looking for any beginner skis, whether they're the wood ones or the composite ones. That ended up being a great purchase. I was thrilled with that. Next up was a lot of two neon orange play toy revolver guns. Um, they sold for $13.99 and we had gotten those in a big bag of toys at the thrift store. We paid 19 cents. Next up was another original like OEM Dymo power adapter that we got at the Goodwill outlet. We paid 92 cents and it sold uh, for our asking price of $12.99. Next up was something that belonged to me. It was a dolphin brand one piece bathing suit from when I used to teach swimming lessons. It sold for $11 on best offer. Next up was um, two skeins of Red Heart branded virgin wool knitting yarn. Those sold for $16.08 and we had gotten those in the Goodwill bin for 67 cents. And yarn sells great for us, especially wool yarn. So we always grab that if it's in good condition and hasn't come unraveled in the bins. Um, next up is more filters. We sold um, a three pack of Brita 
water pitcher replacement filters that we got in the Goodwill bins. They sold for nine. They sold for twelve dollars and sixty eight cents, and we had paid ninety four cents. Next up is a pair of K two snowboarding kids boots. These sold for $59.99 and we had paid $0.68 cents in the Goodwill bins. That was a great deal. Next up is a pack of 12 Creative Memories 7x7 seven seven page protectors. We had got, gotten these in the Goodwill bins for $0.94 cents and they sold for $18 on best offer. And for some reason I went through this like little uh, period where I was just finding all of these creative memories items, but I haven't been finding them lately for some reason. Next up, is, we sold a six pack of locator dots and you may have seen in a previous video that we've sold these, but I found a bunch of them once in the Goodwill bins. They're stickers that you put on a keyboard for someone who has low vision and they provide a braille experience for, um, for a low vision person. But they, uh, we did sell one package for $10.99, which was our asking price, and we had paid $0.92. Cents. And we still have, I think, maybe like four packs left to sell. Next up was an item that belonged to my daughter. It was a Danskin brand um, open front cardigan. It sold for $15 on Best Offer. Next up was a um, brand new in package Heidi DVD. It sold um, through the Global Shipping Program. It went to somewhere in Europe, and uh, we had gotten that for 50 cents at a garage sale, and the buyer paid full asking price of $9.99. Next up was something that belonged to us. It was a lot of 23 multicolor, slimline, just DVD or CD cases. And those sold for $15.50, which was a best offer and we got positive feedback on those. This was another item that belonged to us. It was a Decode 1.8 brand ladies, kind of a tiered black sundress. It sold for $10.48 and uh, that was mine. So we considered the cost zero. That was in our store for a really long time. And it had washers for like almost the entire time it was in our store. I'm not sure why it took so long to sell. Next up was a 2015 McDonald's Happy Meal toy. It was out of the package, but um, in great condition. We had gotten that in a big bag of toys from the thrift store, and we sold that for $7.99. Our cost was 19 cents. Next up was a, uh, a VCR that we got at the Goodwill bins. And normally, like, we'll weigh the VCR and our Goodwill bins. I don't know if all Goodwill bins are like this, but Anything I think that's five pounds or more at our Goodwill bins, they charge us $7 or maybe it's seven pounds, it's $5. I don't know, I get confused. <laughs> but um, we had, this VCR was like buried in our cart and we forgot about it. So we ended up paying for it by the pound. And I don't know if it would have weighed the, if it would have met the wet, the weight threshold or not. But anyway, we ended up paying by the pound for it. So I just used our average to, um, to price it out. So we said that we paid 61 cents for it and uh, it sold for $42.99. It did take a while to sell. Uh, next up was a package of vintage Ambassador brand uh, blank note cards. They had like a little bunny theme on them. And those sold for $11.18, and we had gotten those in the Goodwill bins. So we joke that every time my husband goes to the bins, he finds vintage note cards because it's crazy. He always finds vintage note cards in the bins. Uh, we paid $0.67 cents for those. Next up was um, another one of the vintage Colt firearm posters that we have a bunch of, and we seem to sell one on every single What's Old video. Um, we sold yet another one for $16.99, and this came from um, our other business. Next up was a vintage Taco Bell Talking Chihuahua plush. It was new in the package, but it didn't talk anymore, like the battery was dead, and I didn't want to break the seal on the package to open it up and see if I could replace the battery, so I sold it as is, and 
that it didn't work. And it did sell for $9.99, which was our full asking price, and we had paid $0.92 cents for it in the Goodwill bins. Next up was a pair of Ralph Lauren um, houndstooth men's dress pants. Those sold for $24.68. We got those at a thrift store for $9.26, and those went overseas. I think they went somewhere to Europe through the global shipping program. And I have noticed that we sell a lot of men's Ralph Lauren dress pants uh, that go over to Europe through the global shipping program. We don't really pick them up that often anymore, but, um, but we do, like most of our Ralph Lauren dress pants end up going through the global shipping program to Europe. It's interesting. Next up was a pair of Lucky brand men's jeans that we got at the Goodwill outlet. They weren't in great condition, so we priced them low. Uh, they did sell for $18.38 on uh, offer to buyer, and we had gotten those at the Goodwill bins for $1.68. Next up was one of the Vintage Playboys, the May 1975 edition that we got in the big lot of Vintage Playboys and we had paid $1.43 for it. That sold for $8.99, which was our full asking price. We got that through the Nextdoor app. Next up was more replacement filters. This was, um, these were some that belonged to us. We used to have a Bodum French press that broke and these were the replacement filters that came with that. And then it also had like a cleaning sponge that came with it. And it, they were all new. So we sold those for $10.99. And um, we had gotten a new French press, but it wasn't Bodum. So we didn't need those anymore. Uh, next up was a vintage 2001 Thai Beanie Buddy. It was a bigger plush stuffed animal by Thai. It sold, we had gotten that in the Goodwill outlet. It sold for $16.99 and it, we had paid $0.61. Cents. And then finally, at the end of every Wetzel video, I always go over all of the collectible cards that sold for us. Um, my husband has a large collection of sports and comic cards, mostly from the 90s, some from the 80s. And um, we have tons listed and lots to list and they're a bread and butter item item for us and even though most of them sell for a pretty low price collectively we do make quite a bit of money on those so instead of going over all of them individually i will just tell you the number that sold and the total that we sold them for so this week we sold 15 cards for a total of 41 dollars and 32 cents all right well that wraps up this week's what sold video Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe with the notification bells turned on. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.